Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Podcast. Today is Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's baseball games, look ahead to tonight's games, and look at the standings after some movement in the standings in some of the divisions. Um, WNBA semifinals started yesterday. I forgot to reveal my picks for these series, so I'll do that. Um, Week four bowl projections for college football and my best bet of the day. Okay, we're going to start in Major League Baseball. I believe everybody played yesterday. So without further ado, here we go. The Yankees defeat the Angels 8-0. Yankees are one win away from clinching the American League East title and a playoff berth. They could have clinched a playoff berth with a win plus an Indians loss yesterday, but the Indians have won. We'll get to that game in a couple of minutes. Yankees 99 and 53, Angels 68 and 83. Jonathan the Wise of the win, Noe Ramirez the loss. And by the way, Luis Severino made his return to the mound for the Yankees. He was very good. Four innings, two hits, no one runs, two walks, four strikeouts, an ERA of zero. Mariners over the Pirates, 6 0. The Mariners, 63 and 88. Pittsburgh, 65 and 86. Marco Gonzalez, the win. Mitch Keller, the loss. Blue Jays over the Orioles, 8 to 5. The Blue Jays are 60 and 91. Baltimore, 49 and 102. Derek Wild, the win. Michael Givens, the loss. By the way, Kavon Biggio hit for the cycle. In this game for the Toronto Blue Jays. The Indians defeat the Tigers 7 to 2. Cleveland 88 and 63. Detroit 55 and 105. Or 45 and 105. My bad. Adam Plutko to win. And getting charged with the loss for the Tigers was Zach Reininger. The Giants defeat the Red Sox 7 to 6 in 15 innings. Story of this game is that this is Mike Yastrzemski's first game at Fenway Park. Obviously, his grandfather, Carl, played for the Red Sox a long time ago. And it's only fitting that Yastrzemski homered in this game as well. As the Giants go to 73-78, Boston drops to 79-71. Derek Rodriguez to win and getting charged with the loss for the Red Sox was Trevor Kelly. Phillies over to Braves 5-4. So the Braves still haven't clinched the division yet. They have clinched a playoff berth, though. Phillies are 77 and 72. Atlanta 93 and 59. Vince Velasquez the win. Dallas Keiko the loss. Hector Norris the save. Brewers over the Padres 3 to 1. The Brewers, I believe, are tied with the Cubs now in the wild card standings. We'll get to that in a minute. 82 and 69 on the year. San Diego 68 and 83. Matt Albers the win. Matt Strom the loss. Drew Pomeranz the save. Twins over the White Sox 9 to 8 in 12 innings on a walk off. Bases loaded, hit by pitch with, by former Yankee Ronald Torres. As the Twins go to 93 and 58, Chicago drops to 65 and 86. Getting the win for the Twins, Ryan Harper getting charged with the loss for Chicago was Jose Ruiz. Nationals over the Cardinals 6 to 2. The Nats are 83 and 67. St. Louis is 84 and 67. Patrick Corbin the win. Miles Mikolas, the loss, and the, or I'm sorry, um, Daniel Hudson, the save. Reds over the Cubs, 4 to 2. The Reds are 71 and 81. The Cubs are 82 and 69. Sonny Gray, the win. You Darvish, the loss. Raciel Iglesias, the save. Astros over the Rangers, 4 to 1. Houston. 99 and 53. They're tied with the Yankees right now. Texas 74 and 78. Justin Verlander to win. Lance Lynn the loss. Roberto Osuna the save. Mets over the Rockies 6 to 1. The Mets are 78 and 73. Colorado 66 and 86. Marcus Stroman the win. Tim Melville the loss. Marlins over the Dimex 12 to 6. Marlins 59 or I'm sorry 53 and 98. Arizona 77 and 75. Caleb Smith the win. Matt Andrews the loss. Athletics over the Royals 2 to 1. The A's are 91 and 61, KC 56 and 96. AJ Puke the win, Jorge Lopez the loss, Liam Hendricks the save. Dodgers over the Rays 7 to 5. The Dodgers 98 and 54, 
Tampa 89 and 63. Kenta Maeda to win. Peter Fairbanks the loss and uh, Kenley Jansen the save. All right. Getting underway in about 10 minutes from now, you have the Nats at the Cardinals. Big game. Max Scherzer and Adam Wainwright. One ace and one former ace. 3 o'clock, Mets Rockies. Noah Syndergaard and Jeff Hoffman. 340, Marlins Diamondbacks. Samuel Contra and Mike Leak. 337, Royals Athletics. I just skipped that game on the list for whatever reason. That's my bad. Danny Duffy and Homer Bailey. So Bailey against his former team. 630, Angels Yankees. Yankees going for the American League East crown tonight. You have Dylan Peters and CC Sabathia. And then you have Domingo Herman following CC. As CC, the Yankees have turned him into an opener of some sort. 7 o'clock, the Mariners at the Pirates. Justin Dunn and Dariel Grazel. Blue Jays, Orioles. Clay Buckles and Dylan Bundy. Tigers, Indians. Stephen Turnbull and Aaron Savali. Giants, Red Sox. Jeff Samarja and Julius Chassin. By the way, Chassin has been brilliant with the Red Sox in his short time. And... Bruce Bochy going for a win 2,000 tonight, by the way, for San Francisco before his retirement. 7.20 on ESPN. You have the Phillies at the Braves. Zach Eflin, Julio Tehran. Tough call here between one team that's very close to clinching division. The other team is kind of like out of the race now and kind of meaningless games for the Phillies. Um, I am going to take the Braves at home. Julio Tehran has let me down a couple times. I've bet him. But there's been some times where I've bet against him, and he's been brilliant. So I'm going to take a chance. He's home, and I think the Braves are a team that plays better at home. They'll bounce back from last night, and I think they get the win here today at home against the Philadelphia Phillies. Padres Brewers at 740. You have Daniel Lamette and Adrian Hauser. White Sox Twins. Ivanova and Jake Odorizzi. Reds-Cubs at 8 o'clock. I'm surprised this isn't the ESPN game again, but um, I don't blame them for doing Braves-Phillies this time because Braves-Phillies is a better game on paper because the Phillies are better than the Reds, and the Phillies are obviously a team that's kind of still mathematically alive in the race, like the Mets and some of these other teams in the National League, but oh, Diamondbacks are another one. Um, but I'm surprised they didn't pick this game because the Cubs are a ratings team. Um you have Tyler Maley and John Lester. And Rays Dodgers, Brendan McKay and Tony Gonsolin. And Rangers Astros, last but not least, you have Colby Allard and Garrett Cole. Okay. Now we're going to go over the WNBA playoff scores from last night. And I'm going to give out my picks from the series. And I still feel good about my picks because it's game one. They're best of fives now. In the WNBA. The Sun defeated the Sparks 84-75 to to take game one and take a 1-0 series lead. Alyssa Thomas had 22 points to lead the way for the Sun. Jones had 16. Thomas, J. Thomas had 19. And Williams had 15. And then for L.A., Neko Agumike had 20. Chino Agumike, non-contributor, only had four points off the bench. Candace Parker at 24, and Chelsea Gray had a rough game. And that's not common. Mystics over the Aces, 97-95. This was a great game. I was on the over in this game. That cashed in for me as the Mystics take game one. Emma Misaman was the leading scorer for the Mystics. She had 27 points. Elena Deladon had a 24-6-6, so she was great. Christy Tolliver off the bench had 23 Minutes, eight points. And for the Aces, Liz Cambage had 19. Aja Wilson had 23. Kayla McBride had 19. Jackie Young only had four. Off the bench, Kelsey Plum had 16. The Aces had a chance to win this game. They were a 10.5 point underdog. And give them credit, they covered. And I, t I would have taken the Aces against the spread in that game. And that was just insane that Vegas had... Chicago, or I'm sorry, um, Washington as a 10.5 point favorite. I think that was a little too much, but 
Give the Vegas, the Vegas team credit for hanging around. Bill Embiid is a great coach. And by the way, my picks for the two series is in the Sparks Sun series, I have the Sparks in five. I think the Sparks are more deep. I am not a Derek Fisher fan whatsoever. I think he's a terrible coach. But I just don't love the Sun team and their depth. And I think that the Sparks will get away with Derek Fisher and will be in the WNBA Finals led by the Oguma K sisters, Candace Parker, and Chelsea Gray. And on the other side, Vegas and Washington. I think this series is going to be a much more competitive series than Vegas thinks, just from what it based on the point spread in Game 1. I think the Mystics win in 5. I think that Vegas could potentially steal a game in D.C. Probably maybe Game 2. If not, they'll steal the 2 at Vegas, but this is a good team in Vegas, and I won't be surprised if they knock off the Mystics. So, give me the Mystics in five, and I think Della Donna is obviously the best player in the league. She'll win the MVP, and I think that Tolliver will be better than she was in game one, and then Jackie Young will be better than she was in game one as well for Vegas. Now I'm going to do my bowl projections for college football for week number four. Some changes, especially within the Power Five. Not really much in the Group of Five because the Group of Five Conference Five really doesn't get going for another week or so. So without further ado, bowl projections for week number four. College football playoff, I made one change. I made Alabama my one seed and Georgia my four seed. I just think Alabama's been the better team so far of the two. But if Georgia goes out and kicks ass against Notre Dame this weekend, then I'll probably change it because Georgia has a tougher schedule than Alabama does. And I wasn't sure about Alabama winning the SEC over Georgia because of some of the injuries they've had, specifically to uh, Dylan Moses, their linebacker that's out for the year. But Alabama's overcome everything so far, and Georgia's been great, too, flying under the radar. But I just flipped the two for now. Maybe I'll flip them back if Georgia kicks Notre Dame's ass. The Fiesta Bowl, I'm going to go with Clemson and Ohio State. Clemson, your two seed. Ohio State, your three seed. I just think that the SEC winner will be your one seed because the ACC is weaker than the SEC. And the other reason why I have Alabama as my new one seed is because Texas A&M's a better team, I thought. LSU's a better team than I thought. And, obviously, um, Auburn is potentially a better team than I thought. So, that's why I have Alabama ahead of Georgia because the SEC West depth is better than I expected. Although, Georgia has Notre Dame on their schedule. They have Florida, who's also solid, but they lost their quarterback for the season. So, that kind of affects Georgia's ranking for me in terms of my projected playoffs. And then Ohio State is my three seed. They'll probably lose somewhere along the way. I don't know where. Maybe at home to Michigan State, because that feels like the annual Sparty upset that everybody gets excited about, whether it's them or Michigan. So I'm going to say that Ohio State gets that three spot with an 11-1 record with the win over, let's say, Wisconsin in the Big Ten title game. And then Clemson will breeze, even though they haven't looked special yet this year, although they were great against Syracuse, and that was Trevor Lawrence's best game so far. I just think that Clemson's going to get a little better, and they've, I think especially Trevor Lawrence has bought into the hype, unfortunately, a little bit. It reminds me of Ohio State the year after they won the title, and then Florida State the year they won the title with Jameis Winston. So... A little bit of a championship hangover, even though they're undefeated. Rest of the year six, Cotton Bowl, I have Boise State and Michigan. Orange Bowl, I have Virginia and Notre Dame. The Rose Bowl, I have Utah and Wisconsin. And then the Sugar Bowl, I have LSU and Oklahoma. Other bowl games, Bahamas Bowl on December 20th. UAB in Northern Illinois. Also on December 20th, the Frisco Bowl, Tulane and Army. December 21st, the New Mexico Bowl. North Texas and Utah State, Cure Bowl, Cincinnati and Louisiana, Boca Raton Bowl, Temple and Ohio, Camellia Bowl, Buffalo and Arkansas State, Las Vegas Bowl, San Diego State and Cal, 
New Orleans Bowl, FAU, and Appalachian State. December 23rd is the Crispilla Bowl, Houston Marshall, Christmas Eve, December 24th, the Hawaii Bowl, BYU, Nevada. December 26th, the Independence Bowl, Southern Miss, and Boston College. The Quick Lane Bowl, North Carolina, and Penn State. December 27th, the Military Bowl, Navy, and Wake Forest. The Pinstripe Bowl, North Carolina State, and Northwestern. The Texas Bowl, Oklahoma State, and Texas A&M. The Holiday Bowl, Iowa, and Arizona State. Cheese it Bowl, Colorado and Iowa State, December 28th, the First Responder Bowl, Florida State and Baylor, and then you have the Cotton Bowl that day and the two college football playoff games on that day as well. December 30th, you have the Music City Bowl for Virginia Tech and Kansas State, the Red Box Bowl, Maryland and Washington State, and the Orange Bowl is that night as well. New Year's Eve, the Belk Bowl. Miami and Mississippi State, the Sun Bowl, Syracuse and Oregon, Liberty Bowl, UCF and West Virginia, Arizona Bowl, Wyoming and Georgia Southern, the Alamo Bowl, Texas and Washington, New Year's Day, you have the Citrus Bowl, Michigan State and Florida, the Outback Bowl, Minnesota and Kentucky, and then you have the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl that day as well as you do each and every year. And by the way, next year... College football playoff will be Rose and Sugar. So college football playoff on New Year's Day once 2021 gets underway. So that's next year. This year it's obviously the Saturday before New Year's. And I like it the Saturday before New Year's when it's not the two traditional bowl games in the Rose and the Sugar. I like that a lot, by the way. January 2nd, Birmingham Bowl, Stanford against I believe I wrote UCF down. That was a mistake. Then that would be Houston or Memphis in that spot. Gator Bowl, Nebraska, and Auburn. Famous Idaho Potato Bowl, Western Michigan, and Fresno State. Armed Forces Bowl, Purdue, and New Mexico. And the Mobile Alabama Bowl, Toledo, and Troy. Okay, quickly before um, I go to Best Bet, I'm trying to figure out who... Um, the Birmingham Bowl team is that I was supposed to have written down, but I wrote down UCF by mistake. And sure enough, it is Memphis. Best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Some interesting games on the slate. You have baseball. You have um, WNBA. No, that's Thursday. Never mind. Football's Thursday, too. So it's just baseball games of big favorites that are guarantees to win, like the New York Yankees and the Houston Astros. So, yes, I do think the Yankees will clinch the American League East tonight. They'll be their first division title since 2012, and that's amazing because 2012 was the year that they've had a few injuries that season too, especially in their rotation. Andy Pettit came out of the retirement um Mariano Rivera towards ACL. They were without him that whole year. Derek Jeter, that was his last very good season. A-Rod had a good year that year. Mark Teixeira was good. Curtis Granderson had like 40 homers that year. Robinson Cano was now MVP candidate. Nick Swisher was hurt on and off. Um, that team massively overachieved. Their bullpen wasn't that good. Their rotation, CC Sabathia was... In his prime still. Probably the tail end of his prime. Brett Gardner was somebody that was hurt that season. He came back at the end of the year. I believe he played in the playoffs. He was their left fielder in the playoffs that year. And then they traded for each row. But that was a long time ago. And this Yankees team is obviously much better than that 2012 Yankees team. When they had a lot of older guys that were nearing the ends of their primes. That was the last um, division title they had. And in 2013 they were bad. They won 85 games. Well bad by Yankee standards. Um, 2014, they were bad. They won 84 games. And they lost Robinson Cano after 2013. Probably should have traded him at the 13th deadline. 15, the Yankees overachieved, obviously. Made the wildcard game. Lost to Dallas Keuchel and the Astros. 2016 was the year that they traded off some key assets like Andrew Miller and Araldis Chapman. Got Glaber Torres back. That was a franchise-altering trade, in my opinion. And then they get Araldis Chapman back before 2017. They surprise everybody in 2017. Make the wild card game, win that game, and take the Astros to seven in the LCS after upsetting the Indians 
in the first round that year. And in 2018, last year, obviously, Aaron Boone comes in, replaces Joe Girardi, and then they quote-unquote underachieve by winning only, quote-unquote only, 100 games and losing to the eventual World Series champion Boston Red Sox in the first round. A lot went wrong for the Yanks last year. Some guys didn't have the years that they were expected. Aaron Judge was hurt last year as well. But this year has a different feel to it. It feels like the Red Sox from last year, where everything except for the injuries is breaking right for the Yankees, and they have some unexpected breakouts like Domingo Herman and Giovanni Urshela. And those guys have been a big help to what they've done this year. So will Aaron Boone win the manager of the year? No. But is he a better manager than he was in his rookie season? Absolutely. So without further ado, here are my picks. I'm going with the New York Mets. I think that's an absolute steal because Jeff Hoffman stinks. Noah Syndergaard is awesome. I'm going to go with Homer Bailey and the A's at home. I'm going to take the Yankees. I was going to go Diamondbacks, but Mike Leake's been terrible since he's been traded over there, so I'm going to avoid that one. So, again, Mets, Athletics, Yankees. I'm going to take the Indians against the Tigers. The Indians need to keep winning games to stay in this race. Their schedule, they need to take advantage of it. I don't know if I want to pull the trigger on the Red Sox because... I know Julius Chasin's been great, but they've been using him as an opener, and their bullpen just stinks. So I'm going to avoid that. And I'm going to avoid the Braves, too. I'm going to take the Twins against the White Sox. I'm going to avoid the Brewers. I'm going to take the Cubs at home against the Reds. I don't feel good about it, but John Lester pitches what? Wrigley. So give me the Cubs. And then the Astros are minus 500. Yes, minus 500 against the Texas Rangers tonight. So I'm going to only wager 19 cents. The payout of this, well, it's a 974 bet. So the payout would be $2.04. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping all the baseball games, looking ahead to tomorrow's baseball games. I'm going to have Sean Verma on. We could very well be celebrating the Yankees American League title tomorrow on the show. If not, we'll um, just preview the uh, baseball playoffs a little bit a couple weeks away from that and talk about NFL takeaways throughout the first two weeks. Maybe I'll get him his thoughts on the Maple Leafs extending Mitch Marner finally and his expectations for the Raptors for this season after winning the NBA championship. And I'm going to have Alex Killiar on as well to talk about baseball and football as well. I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.